Artist Sonia Robinson next on City Corner. Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. We often talk about the transformative power of art, going to see a play or an opera or a dance or perhaps looking at a photo or a painting and being transformed by it, changed by it. But there's another side to that. What happens when you have something happen in your life and it actually transforms you to become an artist? Well, that's somewhat the case of our next guest, artist Sonia Robinson, and she's here today to share her story. And we're also gonna take a look at some of her beautiful, beautiful artwork. And thank you again for being here. So I'm going to start off with something that really is actually quite tragic, um, but it's so important as to why we have these beautiful pieces of artwork in our studio today and some of the stuff that we're going to discuss. Uh, I guess the most simple question is to ask is, how did you become an artist? Well, um, of course that title was quite fitting. It was tragic. Uh, my dad was hit by a car in St. Louis City on Del Mar in Euclid. It was a couple of days after Christmas um, and tore my family apart. Um, I didn't think I would recover from it because he was essentially my best friend. Um, and through trial and error, finding uh, through religion, reading all kinds of books and self-help books and everything I can actually find to get myself back up to a happy space, I found art. You found and, art. So mm -hmm. you're at the depths of when you're lo you've lost a parent, especially obviously unexpectedly, and yes. you turned to what, a canvas? Did you just start, how did, what was, what was it that you thought that made you think, let me pick up a paintbrush and, and here's a canvas and to start painting? Well, actually it started out finger painting. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know exactly, you know, you find uh, objects in the house and then you start being creative. Uh, at the time, I, I can't quite recall, but mm -hmm. I think it was a, uh, Martha Stewart uh, segment mm -hmm. where she was finger painting mm -hmm. and she was doing some stuff with pastries and I thought I can, well I can do that uh -huh. so that's kind of I, I transitioned from that to going to get different supplies and started painting with canvas and started that do you think it was an emotional did you actually feel a release when you were when you were painting did it feel like you were able to exhale was that kind of or was it more of just emotions all bottled up and this was just a way to kind of get it out. Oh no, definitely. It felt like a release. Mm -hmm. Every time I laid that brush to the canvas, it was my emotions I felt like I was oh. putting onto the canvas. Um, after I learned several different types of techniques, then it started getting technical. Uh -huh. Then I can guide the paintbrush to make a certain a, a certain image yeah. or a certain movement, but it was a release. And how many years ago was that? Uh, 99, 1999. 99. And yeah. so since then you have all this, your collection that you have just many, many pieces and we're going to kind of get into it. I mean, cause I, I, as I introduced, you know, when we started off saying people always look at an artwork and what it gives them, right? It makes them feel or think oh, something yes. or it'll teach them something. It'll bring out an emotion or a thought. But in your case, that's still the case, obviously, when people see your work, but it's almost like you're creating from a sense of tragedy and loss, but it's turned into something oh, so yes. much more. Yes, yes, yes. Um, also, I started and stopped along the years throughout relationships, uh -huh. but I recognized throughout it all, the pain yes. is what you need to let go of it, hmm. and you have to find a way to let go. Mm -hmm. And art has always been that way for me to let go mm -hmm. of whatever I was going through. So now it is stuck with me to yeah. where it's a lifestyle. Wow. But back then I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, but it's, it's therapeutic, yeah. art therapy. Absolutely, it's a beautiful story. And when you look at your work, and we're gonna get into some of it, I mean, it's hard to believe that you weren't an artist before, that you weren't training or that you weren't yeah. in school. Or that you, so as I look here and all the beautiful works that we have in our studio, when you were like 12, 13, 18, you weren't painting, you weren't sketching, you weren't drawing, or? Well, in school, mm -hmm. I was like any other child, you doodle. You you you, <laughs> you, you, you falsify <laughs> parent signatures. You do, uh, right. <laughs> you do things of the sort, but you just don't put the pieces together. Huh. You know, so I've always been artistic, as everyone would say, mm -hmm. but uh, I never thought it would go to this level. Right, right. Well, we're going to start with one of the first pieces that we have to look at, okay. and it's similar to one that we have in studio. Is uh, tell me what the name of this piece? 
oh, that's basking. She has her head back mm -hmm. and she's just basking. Um, I actually used, I started out with cement and now I have a, <laughs> with the hair to really? make a texture. Cement is very hard. I wanted yeah. something with a grain and see, so I stay in the hardware stores now, <laughs> trying to figure out what I can use on, you know, to, uh -huh. to uh, use for my art. But um, her hair is made of, uh, um, a, um, well, it's a cement uh -huh. concoction. And to make it shine, I use an epoxy resin. Wow. But yeah. Wow. I mean, do you think when you're, when you were thinking back on your, you know, when you're 20 years old, you know, 18 years old, that you would have seen this as your future, that you would be full-time being an artist and have your works hanging in hotels and people commissioning you for pieces? Not at all. Now, as I gotten older, I recognized, okay, yeah. there is something with this and I have to have some type of goal. Yeah. So hotels and uh, furniture stores, things of that sort were my goal. Yeah. But along the way, I've collected barbershops, hair salons, and I don't, you know. It's just wonderful. It's a yeah. good thing. All right, let's take a look at the uh, next piece that we have. It's going to come up on uh, the screen. And I believe this is the cigar photo maybe that we have coming up. Let me, uh, let's see. No, it's not. Which one is, uh, which one is this? Organized chaos. Organized chaos. Yeah, yeah. Now that was inspired by uh, bold colors in the living room that I was given, um, sold to a young lady in Washington, D.C. Really? And um, she had uh, turquoises and uh, yellows and very bold, uh -huh. and I thought this was a great, very fitting for her living uh -huh. space. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at, um, at another one. So here's the cigar. This is the cigar shot. That the, is the that cigar. Shot, the, the painting. Yes. My best friend, Melanie, Melanie Laysath, she and her husband love cigars. <laughs> and she, she's pushed me and encouraged me to start smoking. Uh -huh. And oh. I have, and I turn, and jazz is my favorite, okay. so I turn it on a uh, um, uh, Gregory Porter, uh -huh. oh, uh, yeah. Robert uh -huh. Glasper, and this is what came out. Wow. Yeah. So I, I don't. Initially, I didn't paint objects yeah. because I was like, I really like to just let it flow, let yeah. the paintbrush yeah. flow. But now that I've gotten into objects, I love it. Mm. So now my, I have a vast portfolio. My portfolio has uh, expanded, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, too. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's keep going. Let's take a look at, um, at some more that we have. This one we also have on set. Is it the same, same one? Mm -hmm. And this started with, uh, in my living space, I think one of many of my places where I live, um, these were the colors in my living space. Okay. And of course, I like things to flow. Mm -hmm. that, so my living space inspired this. This was one of first of many um, of the technique that I began. So I paint this on furniture, and then um, I have a chair that I painted this particular really? uh, uh, technique on, and then I couple that with a piece on a piece of canvas. Uh -huh. So I paint on a canvas so you can have something to reflect. So I think what's really interesting too about your work is, you know, it's in, you get commissioned for work and it's in hotels and, and different spaces is that, that that is sort of your comfort zone of it, which is interesting because sometimes people might want something totally abstract and for it to go up in a gallery and someone to buy it in. But how, tell me about that. Like you seem to take comfort and that's really nice to know that you're sort of enhancing spaces. Okay. Like, well, like I said, off and on I painted for years. Uh, didn't know where I was going mm -hmm. with it, just art therapy. Started working for Ashley Furniture Store here in St. Louis. Uh -huh. Used to be Phillips Furniture in Kirkwood. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I began to then figure out I had a love for furniture. Yeah. So for the furniture's, I mean, it has a, a, a sound to it. Sure. The sofas, the curves of the reverse mm -hmm. camelback sofas mm -hmm. and the patterns of the, uh, of the fabrics. I would customize art to go with that decor. Wow. The sound that that sofa yeah. or the rug makes, I put that onto canvas. And so. was it the colors or the shape or the style or just all of it oh, together? Oh, it's all of that together. Yeah, some sofas, is very, the fabric is very simple and it has a curve to it. The, the structure of it mm -hmm. is very strong or, mm -hmm. you know, I play off that. When it comes to a client though, I have to, the art has to yeah. embody their personality. Got it. Yeah. Or you might go, will you go to their space and then say, oh, it's neutral colors, but this is their type of personality and kind of create. Oh, from yes. There. Oh, yeah. See, sometimes uh, a home could reflect your personality. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and it should. So if you have an interior designer come in, they, most of the time, mm -hmm. they're going to interview you during the consultation mm -hmm. and figure out how your room should be. Mm -hmm. And then I come in afterwards and figure all of that mm -hmm. out and 
project that out. Do you think over the years and how this is, you know, what had happened to you personally, how you became painting, do you feel a lot more intuitive about how people's personalities and who they are and oh, how yeah. colors, and do you really, do you think you can read people I from really, a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, all of that, all of the soul searching and I brought that out. Hmm. One, yeah, the soul searching really got me more uh, grounded with myself. Interesting. Yeah. And thus able, it sounds like, to transfer that oh, yes. to interpreting yes. other people and they want what mm -hmm. they want. Well, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at some more of, um, of your... So this is really in spaces. This is a client of yours there. Yeah. Uh, um, their space. Is, who, who is that? Uh, the Big Lebowski. Oh, uh, right. Well, I, yeah, that's one of my favorite clients. His name is Tom Pollahan. He uh, works for Summit Strategy Group. He's one of the owners. He um, commissioned this piece, but he was very particular about the piece that he wanted. Okay. So uh, he came up with, I want this Max Ernst background. Max uh -huh. Ernst is the artist uh -huh. uh, um, from um, the uh, 1900s and 1920s. And uh, he loves the movie, The Big Lebowski. So the background is uh, a replica of uh, one of Max Ernst's uh, techniques. And the front is the... Uh, main character uh -huh. from The Big Lebowski. Oh, that's great. And this is in his office in St. Simon Island. He has a home there. And oh, fantastic. He was showing it off to me, and I was like, you know what, we're going to have to put that somewhere. Uh -huh. So <laughs> it's going on my website, but right now Yeah, it's that's wonderful. Uh -huh. That's wonderful. Let's take a look at the next one. So this is... Uh, that is the... Um, that is the... That, organized chaos. In I mean, project. I mean, it fits perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if the room was designed around your yeah. painting. Well, actually, the painting was designed for the room. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, mm -hmm. it really, it fits. Uh, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, everything about that is gorgeous. Here's another. Do we have a similar one of a similar work here in studio? Did you bring that so much? But or is that just a painting? The the one that you have over here with the strings? Um, no. Oh, yes, that is. Um, Constellations. Okay. Yeah, that is similar to it. Uh, that's just more of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and let's take a look. Uh, now, that is the Four Seasons Hotel. That is their spa area. So I have art that's there for sale as, long, uh, as well as the salon area. Okay, so if people are interested in seeing, besides independently commissioning you for a work that they yes. want, they can go to the Four Seasons and see. We actually have that information for you on the screen. Uh, you can head to Sonia's website um, or you can go to the Four Seasons. We have uh, works on view and for sale at the St. Louis Public Library Shoffley Branch. Yes. And Four Seasons St. Louis Spa or they can email you oh, yes. um, or go to your website or dial the number um, on your screen. We have so many works to get through and so many <laughs> images but we do have to take a quick break. Okay. So for those of you at home, we're going to take a quick break, but please stay with us. We're going to be going through more of Sonia's beautiful, beautiful paintings and talking with her more. So stay with us here on City Corner after this break. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. L-U-V, love you. J-K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X-O. What do you dream about? Something me? I did. Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson, and welcome back to City Corner. Today I'm talking with artist Sonia Robinson about her story, how she became a professional artist, and going through a lot of your artwork, your beautiful artwork. And thank you. I know it's not an easy task to bring everything um, in studio, but it's really great to see some of this up close. Uh, 
up close and just to be able to have the, the textures and to do it. How long does it take you to create some of your pieces well, on average? Well, some, it ranged from an hour really? to a couple weeks. Really? Because remember, I, I well, not remember, but I, <laughs> I paint live. I paint live also with uh, bands or mm -hmm. at charity events or, you know, whatever, whatever function I believe uh -huh. I'm, I'm good at. And um, so I have to get those paintings out, a couple paintings within a couple hour time frame. Wow, yeah. So, you know, the scale is pretty small, but I get a couple paintings out in two hours. Yeah, I want. I do want to talk about that. And we have some of the photos from some of the live art events. I wonder if we can just to be able to look at some of the ones that you brought in studio. Okay. Um, so, for example, we've already talked about this one, but we have this gold piece that's mm -hmm. very textured. And I know you mentioned before you used cement. If we can talk about this gold piece for a bit, tell me um, about the texture in that. Is that solely the paint, or are there other elements included in that? Now that is stucco. Stucco. I use stucco okay. and acrylic paint. So, oh. yeah, yeah. So it's on canvas. Thus your comment earlier about spending time in the hardware store. Right, right, right. So, so you, it is all on canvas. So you're mixing together the with the stucco and the paint and yeah. very interesting. So it uh, gives it a gold flake look. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I want it, again, it, I have a vision for what I want to create and I have to go out and find uh, uh, materials uh -huh. to create that, to create what I uh, envision. When you have clients who say, well, come to the space and I want you to create a painting, do, you, do they specifically say, I would like a more textured piece or are you sort of reading into the space? Um, to, are you sort of reading into the space to say, oh, I think what you need is a work that has some texture to it versus more of a flat painting? Well, I will make suggestions, mm -hmm. number one, and, and also I'll bring in samples. Oh, okay. To where everyone, it, the texture isn't for everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, you know it, it almost selects who, who the client, yeah, so Interesting. you'll know the piece the piece will yeah. select you, you'll know it. That you'll you know, know it. No, that's really interesting. Well, let's keep looking at, we've got some um, some images of, of your artwork, so let's continue on with uh, taking a look at that. Um, so this looks like, uh, where's this? That is the Shapley Library this on Euclid. This is library, oh, yes, got it, it is. yeah. That is in our, their main conference area. Okay. And so we'll go I, on to, oh, go ahead. Oh, you? no, I thought I'd bring a little pizzazz to yeah, the conference room, because yeah. it was very flat, so yeah. hopefully I. <laughs> Hopefully I reach that. And here's one similar to what we have um, in studio. Do you see when you're painting, for example, here with the woman, do you see yourself here? Is this or is this a sort of an embodiment of a of a of a woman that you know yourself? Or? Oh yeah, that is that's you. That is me. <laughs> um, just I, I didn't want the structure to look just like right. me, but I um, wanted to be universal. Mm -hmm. This is in the spa uh, in the salon area at the Four Seasons. Oh, got it, got it, great, yeah. I think that really speaks to, I imagine, a lot of women, you know, oh, seeing yes. that it feels very much like free, you know, freedom, essentially, mm -hmm. when you're looking at it. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Now, this is in uh, one of my clients' home. She okay. was a, a um, um, I met her at the Savannah Jazz uh, Festival okay. last year, and she fell in love with this piece. Uh -huh. So it's in her living room. She went through Christmas, so now she's sending me <laughs> no, every time she, she decorates. Yes, and I love it. Right. I love it when clients share pictures of their rooms. Yes. I love it when, so some of these pictures that I've shown you guys, clients actually send those yes. to us. It's so interesting because your work becomes a part of people's lives mm -hmm. in a way because it's not just in their house and speaking, reflecting them, but it becomes like a piece that's there over time. I mean, I know that I have artwork that feels just as much a part of me because I've had it for so long and it spoke to me at a time. And I think that's what's so beautiful about artwork. I do want to stop at this picture because I really like this, another textured piece. Is this the same composition in terms oh, of yes. the? Oh, okay. It is the same. Okay. They're just elongated. So remember, custom pieces, they have to be customized to the room. Okay. You know, so. Is this at a hotel? This looks like a hotel. Is this a hotel? I mean, <laughs> no, it's amazing. actually a, it's actually a loft area. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Really, really beautiful. Uh, let's see what we, and again, another textured one. Yes, and this is uh, has a permanent place uh, on the walls at the Exodus Art Gallery on Del Mar, oh, 5075 okay. Del Mar. Okay, yeah. all right. And here we go. With here that. we are. Gosh, I mean, <laughs> these, uh, these rooms, these spaces are unbelievable, really just magnificent. Now, a few pieces have been duplicated for printing. Okay. This one I will allow printing sure. because I have I hold the original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just get framing mm -hmm. done and then it looks as if it's the original. What's this one? That is actually man in cloth. 
Okay. If you, it's real distorted, but I made it that way because mm -hmm. um, I just like the mind to wander. So what do you see in it? I, I saw. I thought it was. Yeah, I actually thought it was uh, a man. I didn't. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I, I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be, yeah. you know, something similar or more angelic, or if it was something you know different. But really, uh, I mean, absolutely remarkable. I mean, I really feel like your work is so powerful. It's so strong, and in the sense that I think maybe because I know your story too, and so it kind of adds such a a deep sort of personal element to it. I mean, how do you feel with each, at this point you've created hundreds of pieces. I so, know. I mean, how does it feel to you now when you're working? I mean, does it just feel like this is what I do or does it really still feel each time you pick up the paintbrush that it's something coming from inside out onto the canvas? Before, before I uh, paint every piece, I do say a little prayer, just free myself mm. up, free my mind, you know, just free myself so whatever needs to come through me comes through. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to be pure in my thoughts because mm -hmm. I know it's an element, it's a piece that's going into someone's home. Mm -hmm. So whatever I was feeling, I try not to feel negative mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. um, at the end because I'm going to feel great at the mm -hmm. end after I finish painting. Um, but as you said, it is a part of me and mm -hmm. everyone's home. I can't get enough of when I run into someone and they know the title yeah. of some of my <laughs> of yeah. some of my pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know what what an artist may feel like when they write a song and someone is singing it. Yeah. So that's it's I mean, a really it's a it's, it's something that I think on day to day when you're thinking more of the aspect of decorating, you're not thinking about. Um, the story that's sort of like created, like a piece can do, but it really becomes, as we're saying, sort of interwoven, it can be, mm -hmm. um, in someone's life. I do want to talk about, you mentioned it earlier, the live art, and we have some photos that you do. So people will hire you to come to events and do do live art. How is, how's that? Uh, <laughs> is that, and at the end, it's so refreshing uh -huh. because I will have people come up to me and say, you know what, I, I didn't know what you were painting at the beginning. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing because they don't announce it normally. Right. They just allow me to go. Uh -huh. And then at the end, they'll say, or in the middle, did you watch this young lady start the piece? Uh -huh. Now, you know, it, tra it transformed into this. Like and they're, yeah, looking at so this is a, a jazz, you said it typically yes. is the music that. Now that's jazz at the bistro. Yeah, jazz at uh, the bistro. Off Washington, and that's Russell Gunn, our very own. He lives in Atlanta now, but um, it was my, uh, it, well, he performed here in St. Louis, and I was there to paint live. With so him. when you're doing the live art, do you feel like you, have an idea, oh, okay, I'm going to be at Jazz at the Bistro on this night, this is what I'm going to do, and you're thinking ahead, or you just get there with your canvas and just hear the music and let it go? Well, if it's an artist that I already know, I allow the sound to move me. Okay. So then the, the uh, uh, audience is seeing that sound. But if I have no idea what's being played, <laughs> I will already have something in my head okay. what I can paint. Uh -huh. And then if it's great music, I'll go ahead and let the music move me so they can see that sound. I mean, do artists, do you ever get, um, have like a, a, a hiccup or do you ever have that like just a block in thought? Is it ever clogged? Is it just like I can't create? Do you ever yeah, feel that? Yes, I do all the time. And really? that's why I, I'll go ahead. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll paint what I already had in my head because there's a block. But um, I try not to, well, I practice techniques when I have a block. Okay. Or I just try not to paint because then I'm wasting, <laughs> I am wasting supplies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite? Is there a favorite style or a favorite painting at this point in your career that you have? Actually, this is my, this is my favorite style because this is what started it all. This uh -huh. was, this style was my first sale. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. Th this th is. And that is, it's my technique. It's my own. Because, right, mm -hmm. because it feels like, it feels like your own. Has there been something that someone has commissioned you for that you feel like was new for you, but now it's become something that you do more often? Uh, yeah, the um, Constellations is something that, a client actually suggested some things, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Well, well, yeah." She was like, "I just want something that's shooting off the off the canvas," and I was like, "Okay, well, I'll figure that mm -hmm. out." So the paintings constellation is is something wow. that yeah. So your artwork's really all over the country at this point. Different people that you've created for. Yes. I mean, what what do you where do you go from here? Where do you want to go? I mean, you've kind of been have such a such an interesting story. Your works in different places. What do you want to happen next? Well, I want to walk into a hotel in the lobby and say, this hotel was created. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, <laughs> that's, you're answering the question. This ho the hotel was built around my pieces wow. and around my idea of art. Mm -hmm. So some hotels, um, the, the interior design was the inspiration. Mm -hmm. 
the art can be the inspiration as well. I, you know, so I hear how people will commit for certain hotels that they will have the rooms like a specific artist uh, commission, you know, artwork and there'll be prints and stuff. Is this like, is this a common area within the arts to try to get uh, for painting to try to get picked up by like hotel brands and chains? I can't say it's common. Uh -huh. It's a common business practice, but it's not mm -hmm. common for an artist to mm -hmm. go out and say, you know, this is what I want because we're mm -hmm. so used to uh, now we are <laughs> <laughs> um, so used to mm -hmm. be dr being driven towards the galleries. Yes. You yeah. know, and that's great mm -hmm. because they have a job to do to help promote art, mm -hmm. promote artists. We have to, we have, as an artist, we have jobs to do. Right. You know, I have to go out and beautify this world. Mm -hmm. But um, I chose another direction because mm -hmm. I love interior design. I love furniture. Mm -hmm. What would you say to, I mean, so many people, young people too, want, you know, they are so talented and passionate and someone might say, oh, that's too hard or challenging of a field to go into. I mean, what would you say to someone who wants to pursue, especially again with your unique story, but to someone who wants to pursue being a, a paint, you know, a, an artist and painting uh, full time? Uh, well, I think, um, I would suggest to them to continue to own their craft, mm -hmm. continue to paint, continue to draw. I, I wouldn't concern myself with if it's going to sell, how it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. Just continue to zone in on what you're good at. Mm -hmm. You can only become better. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What's I've never seen anyone be successful and say it was very easy. Right. It's going to be a challenge. Right. There's going to be challenges. Have you ever, since this journey from 1999, to now, I mean, have you ever thought, I need to be, has it, it doesn't seem like in any way anything has, you know, deterred you from, from pursuing your, your dreams, but have you ever had a moment where you thought, I should be doing something different or go back to this, or do you just feel like this is your journey, your path that you're, you're on now? Well, when it stops being fun and when it stops filling me up, that's when I'll stop. Okay. But I'm riding it until I... <laughs> <laughs> until the end, as you should. As you should. Thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. Thank you for bringing your art. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing your beautiful pieces and sharing the images with us and sharing your story with us. Sure. Thank you. All for right. Me. Well, if you want to find more about Sonia's artwork, you can go to soniarobinsonart.com. You can call the number on your screen or you can email her at soniarobinsonart at gmail.com. And again, her works currently at the moment are on view and for sale at the St. Louis Public Library, the Schlafly Branch, and Four Seasons St. Louis Spa. And of course, she does independent commissions, so reach out to her if you have an idea. But uh, thank you again for being here and thank you at home for watching. Please keep it right here on STL TV Experience St. Louis.